This is IVP. Listening to Get in the Word with Truth Table. Presented by Inner Varsity Press. The Daily Audio Bible Podcast, read by Dr. Christina Edmondson and Akemeni Uwan. Let's get in the Word, and may the Word get in us. Open our eyes that we may behold wonderful things in your Word. Old Testament reading. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through Genesis chapter 4, verse 26. The Temptation and the Fall Now the serpent was shrewder than any of the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Is it really true that God said you must not eat from any tree of the orchard? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit from the trees of the orchard, but concerning the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the orchard, God said, You must not eat from it, and you must not touch it, or else you will die. The serpent said to the woman, Surely you will not die, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree produced fruit that was good for food, was attractive to the eye and was desirable for making one wise, she took some of its fruit and ate it. She also gave some of it to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them opened, and they knew they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. The Judgment Oracles of God at the Fall Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God moving about in the orchard at the breezy time of day, and they hid from the Lord among the trees of the orchard. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? The man replied, I heard you moving about in the orchard, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And the Lord God said, Who told you that you were naked? Did you eat from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman whom you gave me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. So the Lord said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman replied, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the cattle and all the living creatures of the field. On your belly you will crawl, and dust you will eat all the days of your life. And I will put hostility between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring, and he will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman, he said, I will greatly increase your labor pains. With pain you will give birth to children. You will want to control your husband, but he will dominate you. But to Adam, he said, because you obeyed your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. The ground is cursed because of you. In painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, but you will eat the grain of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat food until you return to the ground. For out of it, you were taken. For you are dust to dust, you will return. The man named his wife Eve because she was the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments from skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. The Lord God said, Now that the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, he must not be allowed to stretch out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God expelled him from the orchard in Eden to cultivate the ground from which he had been taken. When he drove the man out, he placed on the eastern side of the orchard in Eden angelic sentries who used the flame of a whirling sword to guard the way to the tree of life. The story of Cain and Abel. Now the man was intimate with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. Then she said, I have created a man just as the Lord did. Then she gave birth to his brother Abel. Abel took care of the flocks while Cain cultivated the ground. 
At the designated time, Cain brought some of the fruit of the ground for an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought some of the firstborn of his flock, even the fattest of them. And the Lord was pleased with Abel and his offering. But with Cain and his offering, he was not pleased. So Cain became very angry and his expression was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry and why is your expression downcast? Is it not true that if you do what is right, you will be fine? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at the door. It desires to dominate you, but you must subdue it. Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? And he replied, I don't know. Am I my brother's guardian? But the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. So now you are banished from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you try to cultivate the ground, it will no longer yield its best for you. You will be a homeless wanderer on the earth. Then Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is too great to endure. Look, you are driving me off the land today and I must hide from your presence. I will be a homeless wanderer on the earth. Whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, all right, then, if anyone kills Cain, Cain will be avenged seven times as much. Then the Lord put a special mark on Cain so that no one who found him would strike him down. So Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. The Beginning of Civilization Cain was intimate with his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Cain was building a city, and he named the city after his son Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad. And Irad was the father of Mehuyael. Mehuyael was the father of Methushael. And Methushael was the father of Lamech. Lamech took two wives for himself. The name of the first was Ada, and the name of the second was Zila. Ada gave birth to Jebal. He was the first of those who live in tents and keep livestock. The name of his brother was Jubal. He was the first of all who play the harp and the flute. Now Zila also gave birth to Tubal Cain who heated metal and shaped all kinds of tools made of bronze and iron. The sister of Tubal-Cain was Nama. Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zila, Listen to me, you wives of Lamech, hear my words. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for hurting me. If Cain is to be avenged seven times as much, then Lamech seventy-seven times. And Adam was intimate with his wife again, and she gave birth to a son. She named him Seth, saying, God has given me another child in place of Abel because Cain killed him. And a son was also born to Seth, whom he named Enosh. At that time, people began to worship the Lord. New Testament reading. 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 24. See what sort of love the Father has given to us that we should be called God's children, and indeed we are. For this reason, the world does not know us, because it did not know Him. Dear friends, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet been revealed. We know that whenever it is revealed, we will be like Him, because we will see Him just as He is, and everyone who has this hope focused on Him purifies himself just as Jesus is pure. Everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness. Indeed, sin is lawlessness. And you know that Jesus was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. Everyone who resides in him does not sin. Everyone who sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous, just as Jesus is righteous. The one who practices sin is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was revealed to destroy the works of the devil. Everyone who has been fathered by God does not practice sin because God's seed resides in him and thus he is not able to sin because he has been fathered by God. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are revealed. Everyone who does not practice righteousness, the one who does not love his fellow Christian, is not of God. God is love, so we must love one another. For this is the gospel message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not like Cain, who was of the evil one and brutally murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his deeds were evil, but his brothers were righteous. 
Therefore, do not be surprised, brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. We know that we have crossed over from death to life because we love our fellow Christians. The one who does not love remains in death. Everyone who hates his fellow Christian is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. We have come to know love by this, that Jesus laid down his life for us. Thus, we ought to lay down our lives for our fellow Christians. But whoever has the world's possessions and sees his fellow Christian in need and shuts off his compassion against him, how can the love of God reside in such a person? Little children, let us not love with word or with tongue, but in deed and truth. And by this we will know that we are of the truth and will convince our conscience in his presence that if our conscience condemns us, that God is greater than our conscience and knows all things. Dear friends, if our conscience does not condemn us, we have confidence in the presence of God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing to him. Now this is his commandment that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he gave us the commandment. And the person who keeps his commandment resides in God, in God in him. Now by this, we know that God resides in us by the spirit he has given us. This is the word of God for the people of God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us go boldly to God's throne of grace. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you, oh Lord God, for your word, oh God, the way that it teaches us, oh God, the way that it convicts us, oh God, the way that it trains us in righteousness. Oh God, we thank you for the chance to get it right again, oh God, not in our own strength, but because of the righteousness of Christ, oh God. That is how we live. It is in you, oh God, that we live and move and have our being. God, what a fall, what a mighty fall was taken in the Garden of Eden, O oh God, that plunged us into death, sin, and misery, O oh God. We hear the testimony, O oh God, of the sin of Cain, and we see the temptation, O oh God, to be angry, to sulk, to be burning up within, O oh God, because we are disappointed by what we believe that we should have been rewarded or given by you, O oh God. But you say that if we would subdue this anger, oh God, would it not go well with Cain? Oh God, would you help us? Would you help us not to get angry? (laughs) Anger is a legitimate emotion, oh God. But help us to not sin in our anger, oh God, because we see the wages of such sin, oh Lord. And we know that if we don't love our own brothers and sisters and our neighbors, oh God, then we know that your love does not abide in us. We know, O God, that we do not truly know you, O God, if we hate our own siblings. O Lord, would you help us? Would you help us, O God, with your love? Fill us, O Lord God. There are real temptations toward a perpetual state of hatred. There are real temptations to harbor bitterness and anger. For legitimate hurts, Lord, would you show us the path of righteousness? Would you show us that you are the judge of all the earth and that you shall do right? Would you help us to entrust our debts to you? Would you help us to forgive our debtors, O God, knowing, O God, that it is you, it is you, O Lord God, who will avenge us? Would you help us, O Lord God, to love, to be full of love, O Lord God, for our neighbors, for our siblings, O Lord God, in Christ? Would you help us, O Lord God, to live lives, O God, that reflect the truth of the gospel in our lives, Lord? I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We pray this time of getting the word with Truth Table has encouraged us all to not only be hearers of God's word, but doers. Share your reflections on these scriptures with us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag Get in the Word and hashtag Truth's Table. Saints, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Go with God.
Get in the Word with Truth's Table is a production of Innervar City Press. For 75 years, IVP has created and published resources that deepen lives for Christ to engage the university, church, and the world. Visit ivpress.com for more information. Our Bible reading plan is from biblestudytogether.com and the Bible version is the new English translation used by permission. Sound engineering is from Pottery Studios and our executive producer is Helen Lee.